Hello, I'm Andrew Lawrence King and today I'm talking to you about a Renaissance harp. We sometimes call these Bray harps, you'll see why in a moment. We sometimes call them Gothic harps because of that characteristic shape which reminds of those um, Gothic windows in Renaissance cathedrals. But Perhaps it's not so good to use that word Gothic because there's a 19th century design of harp which was also called Gothic. So perhaps Renaissance harp is the best term for these. And harps like this were described already in the first half of the 14th century. So in the early 1300s, the composer and poet Machaut talks about a harp with 25 strings, which he compares to the 25 graces of his lady. And these harps have this characteristic shape. They're much taller than they're wide. That has the effect of giving you longer strings in the bass and this seems to be the important thing about this design of harp. As we move from early medieval music where if there's two or three parts, they're all in the same register. So the total compass of the piece is perhaps only an octave and a bit. As we move from that to music where there's perhaps a tune in the alto register and there's a tenor part and perhaps a contratenor part lower down in the tenor register, and even four-part pieces that extend down into a bass register, it becomes important to have bass strings, and really the way to get bass strings to sound good is just to have longer strings. So that's how they came up with this design. As you can hear, the characteristic sound of the Renaissance harp is this buzzing sound. And this is made by the little wooden pegs that hold the strings in. These are carefully shaped so that they touch the strings very, very lightly. And with these longer strings, the strings are at quite low tension so they just rattle against that wooden peg to make that buzzing sound. And rather later we have a nice description from Praetorius who calls this the buzzing harp. That sound of a buzzy harp might appear to be very exotic to us, but Praetorius again makes it clear this is die gemeine harfe, the, the usual harp, the standard harp. So in the Renaissance, this buzzy sound was the normal sound of a harp.
essentially these harps are tuned diatonically. It's like a keyboard with only white notes. But you can make occasional sharps by hand stopping the string against the top of the harp. There's C. There's C sharp. Of course, your left hand is occupied whilst you're doing this. There are hints that perhaps they were doing this in the late medieval and early Renaissance times, but when we have definite information later on in the life of this harp, in the mid-16th century, they suggest the idea that you might tune different notes in different octaves. So here I have a B natural in one octave, but a B flat in another. Iconographical evidence suggests that this kind of Renaissance harp came in various different sizes. The two instruments I have here are both made by Rainer Tural, based on Bosch, and this larger one on Memling. The repertoire of these Renaissance harps had a lot in common with the repertoire of the lute, and indeed we often see harp and lute paired together. It also was very similar to the repertoire of early keyboard instruments, with transcriptions of songs, with fantasia-like pieces, um, and dance pieces. There are many sources that we assume are keyboard sources, but that might equally well be music for harps. This kind of Renaissance harp had an extraordinary long life. They appear in the early 14th century and they're still being played in the 17th, even perhaps into the 18th century. An extraordinary long life for a design and fashion item like a musical instrument. And the reason for that is that in spite of what strikes us as a limitation, that these are essentially diatonic instruments, the great strength of this instrument was that it had the whole compass of the Guidonian hand from the lowest G right up through all the range of the human voice. And so you could play vocal polyphony from soprano, alto, tenor, down to bass range all on one instrument. As we come into the High Renaissance, an important part of the repertoire becomes dance music, the newfangled pavans and galliards.
Thank you for listening. I'm Andrew Lawrence King, and that was the Renaissance Harp.